Well, we're back for another episode of the Emissary Authors Podcast, where we help faith-based founders, executives, and entrepreneurs spread the messages that matter. My name is Paul Edwards, and this is my co-host and partner in crime, Jason Todd. And Jason, we've got a, a, a very poignant episode today interviewing our next guest who uh, has learned to write and spread messages even amidst uh, some terrible uh, personal issues and tragedies that, uh, that he had to overcome at the same time. It seems to me that tragedy and struggle can do one of a handful of things. It could either not knock a person back and then they sit and lie there indefinitely. Uh, it can give them strength, you know, strength develops through struggle to press on. Uh, and I think it all, cause all, it also can become inspiration. I think in ways that, uh, that nothing else really can. So I'm looking forward to hearing from Russ, Russ, welcome to the show. Hey guys, uh, thank you so much for having me. What a blessing. Inspiration specialist. I love that That's title. Me. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because one of my live stream shows with, um, a friend of mine that Paul knows well, D Scott Smith, he is a motivational listener and I am an inspiration specialist. And, uh, you know, I found early on, I love to encourage and inspire people. It's why I'm here. It's my purpose in life. And so I just tagged myself the inspiration specialist because everybody said, man, you're so inspiring. I thought, well, maybe I'll use that. So you've been through some things too, also that, uh, perhaps inspiration might have been necessary is my understanding. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, you know, life, I always say life happens and then we choose. And, um, as I had told you, that's actually a follow-up book that that'll be coming out <laughs> later this year, but life happens and then you choose because we can't choose what happens to us initially. Um, you know, things are thrown at us, um, good and bad, and then we get to decide where we take it. Where do we go from there? And that's what I'm all about is deciding to take that and use it, keeping a really good perspective and a mindset that moves you in a positive direction. Sometimes that's really hard and you just have enough to make the next step. But one step forward is continual progress. And just like James Clear says in, um, um, in Atomic Habits, 1% better, just making that little bit of improvement or progress makes a big deal. And so, yeah, I think that's sometimes all it takes. Yeah. You know, the, just, just, I just want for a moment, Russ, to hear, for the audience to hear, uh, a quick example of this and then get your, your take on it. But, um, you know, yesterday, Jason and I were dealing with <laughs> some, uh, some news that we could have potentially, um, catastrophized, you know, and, and we were basically, uh, we were both of us, uh, shared with each other later on that we were kind of prone to that. And, um, I, I, I have learned to say to myself in the moment, um, hard as it, as it feels uh, counterintuitive as it feels, I've had to force myself to say things like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Right. Because you hear this voice or this, this sentiment surge inside you that wants to drag you down in despair and hopelessness. And it feels very real. And yet I, what I take from what you've been through. Uh, I, I have to imagine that you've got your own way of expressing that to yourself that helps you just keep rising above it, no matter what life throws at you. Yeah, well, totally I do. And it's because, you know, I'm a strong man of faith and I trust that God is with me every step of the way. And even when I don't feel it or see it, I know that he's giving me strength as I go through. And that's the number one thing. But also I'm a huge fan of what I would uh, call self-talk because we hear all these voices in our head and we need to take that over. We need to feed ourselves positive input and push out the negative thoughts and input because it starts from the minute we wake up in the morning. And actually, uh, we're going to be talking about a few different things today, but as you see behind me in my book, Befuddled, Live the Life You Choose, I tell this story. Every morning when I get up, first thing I do before my feet hit the floor is I do three things. I tell myself three things. Number one, I'm thankful. I'm thankful and grateful for my beautiful wife, for God, for 
all the blessings in my family and all the good things I have in life. Number two, I give myself a little pep talk and say, I've got this. With yeah. God's help, I can move forward and I can actually do the things. He's given me the talents to do the things that I need to do. And so I'm going to trust that I'm ready to go for that. And number three, I say today's going to be awesome. And I can tell you, there's a lot of people that laugh at me on that one because I'm I'm an early riser. So I'm getting up about 4 a.m. And usually people say, yeah, there's, there's no way at 4 a.m. I'm saying today's going to be awesome, right? But what I'm doing is shaping that mindset and I'm pushing out those negative thoughts because I'm like everybody else. I wake up with worries and frets and concerns for the day. So I'm taking over that conversation and feeding myself positive input. And, you know, does that mean that I walk out of bed and out of my house and everything is perfect all day? Absolutely not. You know, yeah. still negative things happen. But guess what? Because I have a positive perspective, things don't look quite so bad. My favorite saying is, well, the good news is, because you no, know, in any situation, there's always something good. Yes. I sure. am reminded of commercials. And here's why this reminds me of commercials. Commercials are a path into a person's psyche that a person does not necessarily consciously agree to. So you're watching your show, you're in, you're in the middle of enjoyment, and then all of a sudden, boom, commercial. Hey, you know what you need? You need pizza. You know what you need? You need a new mop. Hey, you know what you need? You need this, you need that. And as soon as I stopped watching commercials years ago, I realized I don't really need anything. And, and it's interesting that this pathway into our minds by virtue of a 30 second clip is super powerful to the point that people, companies pay billions of dollars a year to get access to ourselves. And yet what you're talking about there in the early morning hours is playing a commercial to tell yourself what you want to know and what you want to believe. And I can't help but think that it, you know, for the skeptics out there, it's the same as a commercial. It is influential. Only you get to choose the influence rather than having it be chosen for you. Right, exactly. And, and as you can tell by the subtitle of my first book, I'm all about living the life you choose. And um, I think that we can choose to feed ourselves. We can put ourselves in good, good environment, good surroundings, and choose to feed ourselves positive information. Good reason why I don't watch the news, by the way, because I feel like that is almost 99.9% .9 negative information. So I'm going to find out information on my own because people say, well, you're just bur burying your head in the sand. No, I know what I need to know, right? I find out the information I need to find it out. But I'm not going to listen to this dribble of negativity coming at me, and it does influence you. So I agree with you 100% that you need to take control of things, feed yourself that just like they do on commercials. And I think that makes such, uh, such a huge difference in your life. I don't think people realize the impact that they have and the choices that they truly, truly have that affect their life. And I know one thing you're, you're probably going to ask me about, but I'll just touch on. When I went through this cancer journey in the last year and a half, the doctor's first thing they told me was, your number one asset is your positive attitude. Yeah. The number one thing that's going to help you get better faster is your positive attitude. So I think it's very powerful. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of science behind the rewiring of the brain mm -hmm. and how our thoughts uh, can be additive in a way to so as to build momentum in a particular direction and then our body sort of follows along and mm -hmm. and so starting the day right I, i'm a big believer in that so connect this up if you would why the book befuddled live the life you choose what was going on that you thought i need to write this book well i'm going to answer that question but first i've got to say um uh that i love a book by craig groeschel um, that the subtitle is change your thinking, change your life. And so I think that's just an testament to that power. And I've got to also say one other thing that I wanted to comment on, you said a while back, and that was, you know, we think we need all these things, but we really don't need all these things, the stuff, you know, the things, but I love the, uh, if it's okay to quote, 
the NLT version of the Bible, where it says in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love the way that says that, because I think when we start from a mindset, this is going back to what we're talking about. Start from a mindset, we have all we need. I think it changes everything forward from there. So the book came about because I am the big live the life you choose kind of guy. I'm a positive, upbeat. I'm my mama's son. I'm happy with life. And even when things are bad, I'm still happy. Uh, well, that's not always true. I'm still joyful, I'll say, because I choose to be joyful. And um, happiness is fleeting, but joy, I think the joy of the Lord is always in me. But the befuddled part came about because my beautiful wife, one day I was um, uh, in, a, in kind of a hurry to leave for a meeting and I was completely out of sorts. I was late, running behind. I was tripping. I was dropping things. Uh, she was afraid I was going to get in my car and crash. Um, and I was. she goes, honey, honey, slow down. Are you okay? Are you okay? And I said, I'm fine. I'm fine. She goes, no. She goes, that's your go-to. I know you. She goes, really? Because you kind of look befuddled, she said. And I said, no, no, I'm fine. I'm all fine. And I get in my car. I don't even get a mile down the road. And I think to myself, you know what? She's exactly right. I am completely befuddled. I'm out of sorts. I'm, I'm, you know, just not on track. I'm not in alignment with what I need to be doing today. So that's where the befuddled came thing. So I thought to myself, that's how people are living. People are living life by accident. They're leave, living life by chance. They're doing things just like throwing darts at a dartboard, whether it's in their personal life or their business all the time. But we can really be intentional, have purpose, and live the life we choose if we want to. So that is what the book is all about with some fun stories about me thrown in. I'm, I'm curious when you're, when you're writing that book and thinking through your experience, why do you think that people don't take the ownership or the agency that they actually have and should have for their lives and live it by accident? Well, I could say that, um, you know, we call what the middle of the week hump day. We've made it just over the hump. So we're going to slide into Friday because we're just trying to make it to the weekend, right? We're, we're wishing our life away. As my mama used to always say, we're, we're in hoping for the next thing. We're hoping for the next well, we, we went through COVID. Everybody couldn't wait and for 2020 to be over, right? And then what happened in 2021? It was pretty much the same thing. So we slid into 2021. It wasn't much better or different. So people are always hoping and wishing, and they just forget about everything that's happening to them now. And you've got to be present. you got to live in the present. And I think the answer to your question is, because I think we've been programmed to this mentality of the week that we work and we don't really have to like our work. We don't have to really like what we do. We're just making a living, trying to make it to the weekend so then we can enjoy things or make it to retirement so we can enjoy things. And you know what the sad part is? Some people don't make it to the weekend and some people don't make it to retirement. And so they've wished their life away and missed out on opportunities, possibilities in their life. Um, and wishing for better things ahead. And I think that's just our programming of, of who we are, I think. Yeah, you know, Russ, this is interesting because um, <clears throat> I'm, you know, when I first met you a few years ago, I said, there's somebody with the sort of a polar opposite uh, temperament to mine. And, uh, you know, so I have a predilection towards the melancholy and all that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, probably for several years, I, th I think we met probably in 2020. So this is probably two years after, after that time. Um, I went through an, an exercise that I mentioned on a previous episode, Jason, I you remember I mentioned it on our interview with, uh, with Tony Castillo where I forced myself to document all the good things that I did and that were deserving and worthy of love and respect and honor and all of that. And, um, it was, it truly was, it was a 30 day exercise that somebody had challenged me to do. And when I got to the end of it, 
I, I said, something's different. I don't like, because I have an answer for that melancholy voice for that, you know, natural, uh, uh, what have you done for me lately type of voice. I'm like, read it and weep, Bubba. I've done plenty. <laughs> I'd hold my journal open and I'd say, do I have to read it to you again? You know? And, um, and ever since, uh, hearing a message like yours, you know, I can, I can definitely appreciate the hardship. What I always had a narrow view of and a really stunted uh, sort of sense of was, well, where does all this joy come from? Like I, I want it, but I don't know how to find it. And it turns out that it's not something you go find, right? It's not something that, like you said, looking forward to the weekend or anything. It's something you grab hold of in the present. Right. But if you're not meant to keeping a record of the present, if you're not documenting it, if you're not acknowledging it, some people can do that verbally. I have to do it with the written word. But, um, if, you, if you're not constantly taking an inventory of it, then you're, you're leaving your, your brain unprogrammed to sort of just do whatever comes naturally. And what comes naturally for most people is to feel worse, not better. Right. And I think, I think. I think it's really important for the audience to hear what you're mentioning there. If you, if, if the joy is somewhere off in the future, you're never going to get there. And so, right. you know, some people get to retirement, for, for example, and, uh, and they, and, and then they, they degenerate and you, how are you going to enjoy retirement? You know, you yeah. waited all your life to, to, to find joy. And now that you're actually there, you can't even enjoy the joy that you have. Yeah. And so you're right. It's, we got to find it in the present. So tomorrow is an unreachable destination because tomorrow brings tomorrow brings tomorrow. And um, I think that people um, definitely um, get caught up in that. You're right. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of journaling, by the way. So I made a commitment to God and myself, um, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago, um, that I was going to exercise every morning. And I was going to journal every morning in my Bible studies and all that I do my in the morning. And um, I tell you, it's been life changing for me. I actually went from one journal to two to three to four <laughs> because I started journaling. I'd have one about journaling about the day, and then I had one that would go through some scripture I'd read. And but what it really does, it helps me to stay on track. It helps mm-hmm. me to catalog the good things that are going on. And in fact, my um, uh, beautiful wife brought up. Uh, what she thought would be a good thing for us because she tends to be more like you, Paul. She's more melancholy. She's a little bit more, you know, glass half empty and I'm the glass overflowing. I'm a little too much at times and she's just kind of middle of the road. You know, she's she's moving along a little bit more steadily than I. And um, so she said, hey, we should take, we should get a big jar. And when great things happen to us, let's she had heard of somebody else doing this. Let's write it down to stick it in the jar. And at the end of the year, we can go back and pull them out and we can read all the great things that happened to us this last year. I said, that's a great idea. And you know me, I've put things in there a lot of days because I'm always said, I always think great things are happening to me. Um, but uh, I think it's important to write those down. I'm a verbal processor, as you can tell. Um, mm-hmm. And uh my favorite quote is never pass up a good opportunity to shut up. I actually just did a, a marketing with Russ uh, marketing tip on listening and knowing when to shut up. And I really mm-hmm. have to work on that constantly. But all that to be said, even though I process that way, I also process writing as well. So the combination to me is really powerful. And I agree with you. It helps to write things down. Yeah. Here's, you, you opened up the uh, idea of quoting from scripture. And as you were speaking there, uh, the, the scripture that came to my mind, and this is just a paraphrase, is the power of life and death are in the tongue. And there's a couple different ways that's quoted depending on your translation. But uh, I think it goes back to the idea that what we say carries weight, significantly yeah. more weight than we believe it does. And, and we know that because we can become so self-defeated because of that voice in our head that wants to beat us down. And I, you know, it's, it's funny, but I wrote this down, you know, I have a power. Uh, what did you say, Paul? I have a predilection toward the melancholy, which, um, has got to be the first time in my life that I've ever heard those words put together in a sentence. And, uh, it makes me laugh 
because it's I have a predilection toward the melancholy in the context of I have this self-defeating voice that I overcome by speaking life to it. Right. And the power that is in that moment, that moment of speaking life is, I think it is, uh, people don't take that power into their own hands when they could, mm -hmm. like you talk about some, I'm befuddled. All right. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going right. to going to assess the situation and then take steps forward to, to create the life, to create that life today. Like you talk about, there's no tomorrow, it's never right. coming. It's always today. It's always now live, live the life that you want to today because you have the agency to choose. Yeah. And you just got to decide, like I said, life happens and then you choose life's going to keep happening to you. And I love that the power of the tongue is amazing. And I love that scripture because, and I believe that's in Proverbs, I, the, the whole idea of that is we have the power to lift up or to tear down. We have the power to encourage people, inspire pe people, which is really my passion and my purpose in life, or we can tear them down and we do the same to ourselves. In fact, I think we it's more to ourselves than to others because when we're torn down, we'll tear others down. When we're lifted up, we'll lift others up. And um, I think it is so important to make sure and encourage yourself and to remove words from your vocabulary that are negative and phrases that are negative, like, oh, there it goes again. Just my luck. Just, you know what, just, you know, we have all of these things, these sayings that are just pulling ourselves down. That's what I get do. That's what I get for getting my hopes up, right? Well, why not have our hopes up? Because if it doesn't happen, doesn't it feel better to have your hopes up than to be thinking negative? Oh, but I'll be let down. I'll be discouraged. So you're counting on being let down and being discouraged. It's this whole mindset. It's this whole process of thinking. So we need to remove that and we need to replace it. And people say, well, that's easier said than done. Well, absolutely, it's easier said than done. But you can do it by taking this thing we call a brain that only holds so much information at one time, displacing those negative thoughts and replacing them with positive thoughts. And that's where all that we're talking about will do that. And it will not be a magic pill or a magic cure, but it's going to make things a whole lot better by giving you a better mindset perspective in life. I'll tell you what else, Russ, I have never in, and I've done an awful lot of, uh, giving up ahead of time. Like you're talking to, like you're talking about, right. I've done an awful lot of saying, well, it's what's the point of having a positive attitude. It's not going to work out anyway. And I guess somehow I expected that if I chose that up front, and then reality confirmed my suspicion by showing me that it wasn't worth having a, a positive attitude that I would somehow feel better as a result of having made that decision ahead of time. But it, it never actually happened. I just felt maybe a little less worse, <laughs> but I, not better. No, it it's, does. it's fear. It's the yeah. fear of being let down the fear of not things not happening that we wanted to, that we hoped and dreamed for. It's the fear of that not happening. And, and that whole process is created out of fear. And what does God say? Don't fear. Does he say not to fear because we can stop fearing? No. He says it because we're human and he knows we're going to be scared and fear. Yeah. He's saying you don't have to be that way. And I'm a firm believer that we can move out a whole bunch of that fear. Sure, it'll creep in every now and then. I wake up in the morning and I have worried thoughts and thinking, and I have to purposely start displacing those in my mind with self-talk. But it doesn't, but I tell you, it's a whole lot better to be thinking positively, to get your hopes up, to be looking for brighter future, because you know what? You find what you look for. If you're constantly looking for positive things, you're going to find that a whole lot more than you are if you're looking for negative things. Yeah. I don't know what it's called, but there's a psychological principle that's closely related to the idea of the self-fulfilling prophecy. And it goes something like this, that we will choose a, we will choose essentially to not do something because we can control the outcome and it's a subconscious process. So let's say I am really hoping that, uh, 
you know, somebody's going to make me dinner. I don't know. I'm hoping that somebody's going to make, make dinner. Uh, and instead of, instead of asking, uh, I'll just be like, I'll just do it. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Right. Because what I, what I don't want to hear is that, Hey, you know, do you want to make dinner tonight? And the other person go, no, I'll be like, okay, sounds good. Right. And it's that exchange there right. of, I knew it. I knew it. Things, you know, what happens if my hopes are dashed? I'd rather not feel the, I'd, I'd rather not feel my hopes being dashed. So I shall dash them myself by yeah. saying I'm okay. That's exactly it. it. Yeah. You're doing it yourself. You're doing it to yourself. So somebody else doesn't do it to you because you're afraid of somebody doing it to you. So instead you're doing it to yourself. You know, I think we can take this all the way into something we touched on before. And when we have super bad news, super life threatening or life altering events, right? Happen to us. How do we move through those? How do we navigate through those? Because every day is made up of goods and bads, you know, pluses and negatives. And we have to do this process a little bit every day. And I think I've been blessed with some pretty whopper, some pretty big whoppers that have helped me <laughs> make it through. And, you know, it started with a near life threatening accident when I was 19. It happened on July 9th uh, in the summer. And I was a just after my freshman year at Oregon State. And after two and a half weeks of losing my memory, I don't even know what happened until two and a half weeks after the accident because of so much brain swelling and trauma. When I started to recover, I told them I was going back to school in the fall. So think about this. Right now, we're already pushing August. School starts in September. The doctors are laughing at me and they're telling me, you're crazy. You're not going. I will tell you that I was so determined and so motivated. I was back the last week of September at Oregon State University for my sophomore year. Then I went through the situation with both my parents passing away and I had some super, my dad had lung cancer. My mama had Alzheimer's, had to deal with that. I'm the oldest of, I have one sibling, but I had to take care of all of that. And I could have looked at all that as negative. Instead, I would walk the halls with mama in her memory care, and we would laugh and sing. She had no idea what we were talking about half the time, but we were having fun, you know? And I decided to live for the happy moments, right? Live for the joyful moments. And then it came down to me having cancer. And I tell you, after they told me, after my first surgery, that it was worse than they thought, they found more cancer. Um, and I had to go through treatment. After my family and I breaking down and crying a little bit and going through the, you know, the momentary shock of all of that, um, I chose by the next day, my dad always said to me, you know, son, tomorrow's a new day. And I woke up the next morning and I thought, no, you know what? God's on my side. I'm not going to let this beat me. I'm not going to let this beat me. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to do what they say. I'm going to choose my path and I'm going to get better. And you know what? Today, I'm cancer-free. Sure, I've got mm -hmm. physical issues that have come out of the whole thing that I have to deal with, but I've learned how to adapt to those, how to deal with those, and how to move forward with my life because I chose that all along the way because I was not letting fear take hold of me. I was not going, oh, you know what? Look at the horrible things that are happening to me, and I'm not going to look for brighter days or get my hopes up. Instead, I live to get my hopes up. And so yeah. here I am today. Yeah, the serenity prayer comes to my mind in in that visual of you walking, you know, the halls with your mom, <clears> that <throat> you can't change what's happening, but you can change how you deal with it. And I see the contrast of either lamenting every day or saying, you know what? It is, it really is what it is. Now I could choose to it craft some joy in this moment, you know, take this lump of clay and turn it into something. And, and that I think is a powerful tool that everybody has within yes. them. And we so often live in denial of the power, the agency with which we have to really, uh, to call into existence, I, perhaps the creative energy, uh, that we are imparted with. Mm -hmm. to, yeah. uh, to live a joyful life. And like you talk about live life, 
that you choose. You mm-hmm. actually can choose it. Yeah. You know, and, and people will say to me, you know, oh, I can't choose my life because they're, they're coming from that negative perspective. All this horrible stuff happens to me and I can't choose what happens to me. Well, other than putting ourselves in good environment and a good surroundings, you're right. We can't choose. And I tell them, you're right. But you get to make that choice and you get to choose your perspective. And my favorite saying, and sometimes it drives my wife crazy because something horrible, horrible will be happening. And I'll say, well, you know, the good news is we're still alive. We still have our family. I always come up with good things because I'm disposed to that. That is what I've chosen in my life. I mean, God created me with a positive attitude. I got I to admit, I had a head start. I had a running start on that, but I've chosen that path as well because I want to be happy. I want to be joyful. I want to enjoy my life. And, and that helps me get through some of these negative times. You know, when I'm part of the cancer journey, I'm a type 1 diabetic now. And, um, and I also have vertigo. And the other night we're going to dinner with friends. I have a vertigo episode and then my blood sugar drops to all near, near, you know, um, catastrophe levels. And it was kind of scary for a moment, but I just kept breathing. I kept moving forward. I kept doing what I needed to do. And I moved through that situation and out of it. And then had a lovely conversation with our friends for the last couple hours of dinner. Instead of taking, you know, the, oh, this is going to be horrible. It's terrible. I got to stop my life and I got to, you know, shut everything out and isolate myself. Instead, I just move my way through it. And sometimes, guys, it's only one step at a time. Sometimes things are crummy. Some things are lousy and you just have to move through them one step at a time, but just keep getting better. Yeah. What I've, uh, what I've kept in my back pocket now, uh, Cause life is, you know, in the last year and a half has been really, really good for me, but I'm also aware that that, you know, seasons come and seasons go. Right. And I've said to myself, um, if it, you know, if things turn dark or bleak again, those are the times where we have to, I, I love this phrase from Morgan Snyder. He said, grab the micro, find the smallest, simplest things. Uh, that you can be thankful for, happy about, take pleasure in. And I want to affirm that in you, Russ, and, and, and it, it made me think of a, a story I heard, um, not to get, I, we have a running joke on the show, uh, not that I want to get philosophical or anything, Jason, but I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and do it. And, um, this, uh, this, this rabbi was telling a story and he said, um, if you, if you took a, a a hundred pieces of paper and you wrote the word yes on 99 of them and you wrote the word no on one of them and you dumped them in a hat and you shuffled it around and you pulled out and it was the word no you would say Hmm. lucky draw now if you put it back in and you shuffled it all around and you drew the word no again you would say whoa coincidence that's, that's unusual. Very odds are against that happening. Yeah. What about if you drew it 10 times in a row or 50 times in a row or a hundred times in a row and you still got the word no, right? What's going on there? Well, you're establishing a pattern and a lot of what we look at and take for granted all around us is patterns that we don't see the miracle of it because we're so used to it that it, it just seems like that's the way things are, you know, we never stop to think, uh, we know water flows down a mountainside, but who told water to flow in the first place, right? Who came yeah. up with that idea? Mm-hmm. We didn't, we were just born into it. We didn't invent it. We didn't mm-hmm. create it. We don't even know how to make that thing, that kind of thing happen. And the, the point of the, of the story was that the, the miraculous is all around us. We just are so used to it. We don't think of it as miraculous. Mm-hmm. And you're exercising that same principle by saying, uh, there are wonderful, terrific things happening to me every single day. And they probably, most of them look quite ordinary. Most of them look like the, well, that happens to everybody. Why is it so wonderful? Well, it's wonderful because it's wonderful for no other reason. You are just short-sighted and you don't see 
right? Meaning the person who's complaining. Yeah. You don't I, see that that's a miracle. I always say that even through the most negative circumstances, there's so much more positive. You know, my word for 2024 is abundant yeah. uh, and abundance that God has given us around us. There's so much, so many blessings that we're staring at right now. You know, I'm in, I'm in a, a house that God has given me with a roof over my head. I have a car to drive. I have a beautiful wife. I have two amazing kids, an amazing daughter-in-law. There's so many good things happening. Yes, there's negative things that come around down the road, but those are the one no in the midst of the many, many yeses. And if yeah. we, like you said, if we focus on that one no or the fact that we keep bumping into that one no more than we would like, we're missing all those yeses that are floating around us all the time that are really making this world amazing, making our life amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's such, it's such a good and timely message, I think, for, for where we're at in this world. Um, so people can get in contact with you at RussHedge.com. That's it. I'm a simple-minded guy with one simple step, one-stop shopping there. If you want to know about me, RussHedge.com. <laughs> you can hear about all my live streams, about my books, about my coaching, about myself, anything. Uh, there's even a picture of my beautiful wife and son and daughter on that page. So um, anyway, yeah, it's, it's uh, all right there. Yeah, I can attest to it. It is a one-stop shop. You've got a lot of stuff going on. You also have a couple more books that are coming out. Uh, it sounds like that you're working on. So yes. all of our, for all of our viewers and listeners, uh, pick up Russ Hedge's book, Befuddled, Live the Life You Choose. And then he's got some other books uh, and resources on his website as well. And there you go. <laughs> and who could not prepare it? You know, I don't want to downplay the importance of, of inspiration. Uh, you know, inspiration is bandied about as though, Hey, you know, we're going to go into a room. We're going to inspire, uh, you know, uh, so we came off of a weekend youth retreat. Uh, and yet we do find ourselves in these moments that are real and raw and part of the human experience. It Your is. inspiration is so much deeper than the veneer. So Russ, thank you so much for being here on the Emissary Authors podcast. It's been a real pleasure. You bet. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming, Russ.